Hi there, my name is Alistair Marshall and I work for Cruise and I'll be taking you through the second notebook in our video notebook tutorial series talking about calibration and model learning. If you'd like to know more about optimal control, you can check out my colleague Will's video. Now I don't have a quantum computer sitting behind me, so we'll be simulating all of our quantum hardware. However, you can imagine, I hope quite easily, how you would integrate our software with your quantum hardware. So we'll start by creating this simple single qubit experiment. So we've got a single qubit and we can change the parameters. Inside Cruise, it's really important to capture which of the parameters we'd like to optimize. And we can do that using this concept of a parameter map, and more specifically, of this concept of an opt map. So for example, we have a Gaussian that we can change the amplitude of. Now, we want to perform the orbit procedure. That is the optimized randomized benchmarking procedure. And so we can generate some set of gates here. We're going to generate a set of gates such that their application should produce an identity gate. And then we know any deviation from the identity gate will be the measure of infidelity for that set of gates. We can visualize this inside uh, Qiskit. And so you can see here the set of gates that we'd like to apply. Now we get to the fun part. The actual calibration interface of Cruise is really simple. We pass you a vector of parameters and you return to us the results. Parameters in, results out. It's really that simple. That makes it really easy to integrate with your experiment. You just write a function that takes our parameter vector, performs some experiment, and then returns some fidelity. Cruise handles the rest. So for example, in this case, we're going to use the Cruise Chasm physics simulator to simulate the physics required. We can set up a simple function here, orbit Qiskit. It takes a vector of parameters, creates the sequences, and then does the, the then simulates them, and then computes the population for all of the excited states. We then return the goal, which is the average of the excited state populations from every circuit. We can also return four optional arguments, results, the standard deviation of the results, the number of sequences, and the number of shots. Some algorithms within the Cruise toolset are able to make use of that information, but otherwise you can just return none. And so I hope you can see how simple this is, but how powerful it is. We have one example notebook where we're running a server in Julia that's doing a simulation of a Rydberg atom quantum computer, and we're passing parameters into the server with no knowledge of what's going on in the background in order to optimize those parameters. Now to do the actual optimization, we use an algorithm called CMAES. That is an evolutionary strategy algorithm that we can use uh, to do gradient free optimization. It generates a point cloud of different points and then begins to hone in using that point cloud on the true value of the parameters. There's also your kind of classic algorithms like Nelder Mead it's also not a problem, um, but in this case, I've chosen CMAES. We have a whole host of different algorithm options that we can use. For example, the population size, so the number of points to put in the point cloud. And I've just chosen some parameters here. All of the important information within Cruise about calibration is then captured in this calibration object. We can pass in the directory path that we can use where Cruise can save all of its log files. We can also pass in this evaluation function. Now that's what the function that we defined before. And if you remember, it just has to map a vector of parameters to some result value. It doesn't have to, we don't need to know anything else about it. We then pass in the, the options for the algorithm and the algorithm itself. When we call optimize controls then, the algorithm begins to optimize and produces this nice plot here. And you can see after one epoch, what the error was. I terminated it before it converged. Now I'd like to talk a bit about model learning. This is a really powerful concept within the Cruise toolset, whereby data that we've generated in an experiment can be used to improve our knowledge of parameters and infer important features that we should be capturing in our model. So say you've generated a whole bunch of data like we just did in our simulation. Well, we can load that into Cruise um, as a pickled file. We can then look at the opt map, so we can look at which parameters were optimized, and we can group up all of the data 
based on the parameters that were chosen. So we get some idea of how each parameter change changes our, our goal function. In this case, we have nine experimental runs, and we can see, for example, um, one set of the parameters that were run. And then we can look at um, the, the example sequence of all of the different orbit gates that we ran. Now, the model in this case that we'd like to learn is that we have a single qubit that has an associated frequency and an associated anharmonicity that we know, but we'd like to know more precisely. It's really simple to set up the model learning object here. And so we have a load of different parameters again. One really cool thing is we're using a gradient-free and gradient-based approach here. So we're doing a CMAES optimization first. So we're generating that point cloud and we're going to generate some um, gradient-free progress before turning to um, a gradient-based approach once we've, we've found a good gradient-free solution. So we're getting the kind of best of both worlds here. We can also choose how data points are selected from the data set um, and, and how they're used in their learning. And we can choose how many data points we're going to choose. It's then simple again to capture all of that information inside this um, model learning object. And you can see here um, that we have a lot of the same, the same kind of uh, parameter names. So we can pass in our data files, we can pass in a log path and the algorithm alongside the options, the sampling method, things like that. It's then really simple um, to run the optimization and um, see what the results look like. But I think for, for this model learning, it's best to look and see how well we did, because in this case, we're simulating it and we know what the real values are. And so we can visualize and analyze really easily our model learning results. And so you can see here, um, just a little summary table that we've generated of the results. And if we look at the best point that our model has learned, so the, the point at which we came closest to our goal, um, you can see here in blue the progress of the model learning, and you can see in red and black, um, black represents the converged line, uh, the converged value, so that's the value that model learning eventually found, and red represents the true value that we're pretending is unknown. And so you can see here, for the qubit and harmonicity, you can see how closely they matched. And so the model learning has done a great job here in finding the qubit and harmonicity. We can also look at the qubit frequency. And so you can see here in red the real value, and you can see in blue that the, uh, the model learning algorithm has eventually reached this real value. And finally, we can look at how our goal function has changed with time, and you can see that eventually it has reached this final um, value of the goal function as low as it can go.